Hi everybody, welcome to Inside Golf. Welcome to River Winds in West Deptford. I'm Harry Donahue and today our guest is Ron Jaworski. Ron Jaworski has been a success at everything he's been involved in. As a player in the NFL for almost 20 years, later he was a team owner. He now owns and manages eight golf courses in the area. He's a philanthropist, raising money to help kids at risk. And you know what, folks? He is as positive a person as I have ever met. Ron Jaworski joins us next here on Inside Golf. The 27th season of Inside Golf is presented by Destination Monco Golf, the first tee of Greater Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Association of Golf Course Superintendents, the Golf Association of Philadelphia, GAP, Jersey Man and Philly Man Magazine, and Inside Golf's partner since 1998, the Philadelphia section of the PGA. Golf is the great equalizer. For many, this journey is an escape from reality, a chance to be part of a team, a career opportunity. PGA Reach impacts lives through golf by lifting people up, giving them hope, and sending them down an alternate path that they never saw coming. With PGA Reach Philadelphia, as in life and in golf, the most important shot you take is the next one. Welcome back. Inside Golf continues. We are at River Winds over in West Deptford, New Jersey. It's the home of uh, Ron Jaworski's, one of his many golf courses in the area. And here he is, Joe's himself. How you doing, buddy? I am doing great, Harry. Wonderful to have you here at River Winds. Probably the best view in South Jersey. You look across the river, what do you see? The Lincoln Financial Field over right. there, the airport over here, Center City Live Casino. All from this view, it's a beautiful vista. Highest point in South Jersey, maybe. Of course. Right. Of course. Beautiful, beautiful view. You know, Joe, as I mentioned in the opening about your career, the success stories you had as a player in the NFL for Christmas, almost 20 years or something like that. Only 17. <laughs> Only 17. <laughs> and uh, then you were an owner of an Arena League team, the Philadelphia Soul. You three won time, titles Three-time champions. I'd like, All right. to, like to throw that in. And uh, what else have you done? Of course, the golf. And 27 years as a television analyst. And right? also been he must have started when he wait, was wait. five years old <laughs> to do all this I, stuff. I appreciate that. But first of all, I've been married 50 years. Right. Three great kids and seven grandsons. So th that's as important as anything I've ever done. I understand. Yeah. I, can, I can live that yeah. story too. But the one thing, as I mentioned in the open, is you are on my top five list of the most positive thinking individuals I have ever met when it comes not just to sports or entrepreneurship or whatever, politics, you're an up guy, Yeah. you know? And I just wonder, was that something you inherited like genetically? Did you have to work on it? Because if you did, you did a heck of a job. Harry, a combination of both. You know, I think uh, I, I was born with good genes where I was, I was always a positive guy. I remember reading when I was younger books on positive thinking, psycho-cybernetics, visualization, making things happen. I've also taken courses and been trained by uh, the Naval Academy in, in leadership. I took courses when they were in, in, the, in the off season uh, to, to get better at being positive, to get better at leadership. And I think uh, it's, a, it's never one thing, you know, to be successful, it's never one thing. So I think uh, I, I've been very, very fortunate to learn from a lot of wonderful people. Yeah, well, it certainly has paid off for you. Uh, here you are. You're, I'm not going to tell any secrets out of uh, you know school, but uh, the man is over 70. <laughs> Look at him. He's 73. Great. There 73. you go. 73. I'm, uh, okay. I'm, I'm proud of that. And, and still and, cooking. And in good health. And hitting the ball 220. Shot a 79 yesterday, so I can still <laughs> I, can, I can still play a little bit. Okay. Yeah. And speaking about play, uh, Youngstown State. Yeah. Well, Lackawanna. Outside Buffalo Correct. first, right? Big Bills fan, I guess, growing up with uh, Jack Kemp and everything yeah, I was going on at Memorial Stadium. Yeah, War Memorial Stadium, downtown Buffalo. I was actually, as a, as a young man of about you know, 11, 12 years old, a season ticket holder for the Buffalo Bills, section 23, row 13, seat three. Got on a bus, went to the games by myself. So I was, as a young South Philly, big football fan. And that's kind of, and Jack Kemp, who you mentioned, when I was drafted by the LA Rams, one of the first calls I made was a then Congressman Jack Kemp give me some advice on what to do. So the lineage just all connects. Right. So how did a guy from Youngstown State become the 37th pick 
in the NFL draft in 1973. Well, I actually had a really good college career, but I got a really good break. Dan Fouts, who was going to be the who was going to be the quarterback in the Senior Bowl game, got hurt at the East West Shrine game. So, Lou Saban, who was the coach of the Bills, needed a backup quarterback, and I was going to be the backup quarterback for the North team in the Senior Bowl. And he called me and said, "Can you make it? Can I make it? I'll be on the next plane to Mobile, Alabama." <laughs> I went down there, and like the first day of practice, it was like you know, Burt Jones, Gary Huff, Tony Adams are the big name, big college quarterbacks. So I'm this little kid from Youngstown State coming out there. I want to. After one practice, I knew I was as good as anybody. Really? And I, was, I, was, I was throwing darts, throwing BBs, and throwing lasers, you know? So your value went up in terms of I what the scouts a, were seeing. I would have been a fifth-round pick without the Senior Bowl game, I think. But I had a really strong Senior Bowl game. And uh, that catapulted me to the 37 players selected in that draft. How long did it take for you to get on the field? That third first year, year? Third year, no. Uh, it, they had what was called the taxi squad at that time, where yeah. you were just basically on, on a reserve squad in case there was an emergency and someone got hurt. So I was the third string quarterback my first year. And quite honestly, at that time, I was disappointed. But looking back, it was the right thing. I wasn't ready for big time football in the NFL. Okay. That year of learning under great players, great leaders like John Hadlin, James Harris, taught me the valuable lesson of hey, be patient. Was Dick Vermeil on that first day? Dick Vermeil was coaching there? the running backs at the Rams in 73. He then became the head coach of UCLA. That's why I ended up in Philadelphia, because he knew when I was a rookie, the talent that I had, I just, I just needed a little refining, and he was the guy that refined me. Yeah, he came to Philly um, mid-70s. 76, yeah. 76. You were, were the quarterback that actually um, what, led the Eagles to their first playoff appearance in like 18 years, <laughs> since back in the Benaric Van Brocklin era. 1960, remember How about that? that? Go way Another back. old Rams quarterback. <laughs> huh? yeah, mentioned all the old guys, right? <laughs> <laughs> and what was that like? Yeah, I mean, we were a bad football team when Vermeil came in here. And he, I mean, you knew it was going to be a painstaking process. It was going to take some time and to be patient. But, you know, in three years, we were back in the playoffs and we lost the game down in Tampa Bay. But, you know, then that catapulted us to the next year where we you know, we won nine and seven. Then you go 10 and six. Then you go 11 and five. And all of a sudden, 12 and four, you're in the Super Bowl. So Dick Vermeil had a plan. He executed that plan to perfection, except we came up short in Super Bowl 15. Yeah. In recent years, the league has done everything they can to protect the quarterback. That wasn't the case <laughs> when you were playing. And, uh, you know, all those successful years with the Eagles, you paid a, a, a huge price. By that, I mean some of the hits that you took and the one that everybody, I think, who knows that era and your time with the Eagles is the Mike Hartenstein yeah. defensive end for the Chicago Bears. Blindside hit. I'm, when I say hit, that doesn't describe it. Well, if, if that would be today's NFL and Hartenstein hit a quarterback like he hit me, he'd probably be in jail. I mean, you know, the, 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 and, and there'd be I, a flag I, I, on the field. Flag. There was no flag. They, they fined Hartenstein like five thousand dollars. I didn't get the money. I should have got the money, and I've been okay with it. I didn't went right to the league and the fund that they have for for the pension plan. But um, that was the hardest. That was the hardest hit that I ever had. Of all, of all, but. I don't want to be a winery. You know, the no. game has changed. I, I love what the league is doing to protect the player, players, concussions. I had, you know, by Otho Davis, our athletic trainer in Philadelphia, 32 concussions. Oh, my goodness. And that's that's scary in itself to be 73 years old. So well, I'm sure the heart sign. That was, uh, that was, hit, a, that was that, a contributor. That's right near the top. But, uh, you know, the game is better now. The game is different now. I don't want to be one of those guys, that, old guys that whine about the way the game is played. But the target now to hit a quarterback is right here. You can't hit him in the head. You can't hit him in the knees. You can't right. hit him in the arm. And, that, you know, that's why – Quarterbacks are lasting longer and they're more productive because hey, they're healthier. So that makes a, a big difference, Harry. Yeah. Well, listen, we're going to take a break and be back with Jaws here at Riverwinds in West Deptford. Uh, we talked about his career and all the success he had and all the hits he took on the gridiron. <laughs> but we're going to talk now about the Lynx here at Riverwinds and beyond because this guy has built a golf course empire. Back with Jaws. We continue in a moment on Inside Golf. Hi, Tony Salucci with the Beacon Group of Companies. If your company has between 50 and 500 employees enrolled in your health insurance plan, there's a really good chance we can reduce your costs significantly and increase the benefits employees receive. How do we do it? We put you together with several thousand employers of a similar size across the country so your company can get amazing buying power. Schedule a conversation with one of our employee benefits specialists today at mybeacongroup.com. Park it is free! <laughs> hey! Four bucks! Yes! With so many affordable things to do in Montgomery County, PA, go ahead, freak out! 
Welcome back inside golf at beautiful River Winds, West Effort, with the man who runs the whole show here and a few other shows in the area, Ron Jaworski. You know, before we go on and talk about golf, during the break there, you and I were talking about some other things that happened in your career. 80, of course, the Eagles went to the Super Bowl, unfortunately lost to a pretty good Oakland Raider yeah. team. But that year you were a pro bowler. You were the off, uh, Offensive Player of the Year in the NFL, and you told me something I didn't realize. Yeah, I was a Dunlop uh, Professional Athlete of the Year that year, so wow. a lot of things went well for me in 80. Wow. Except and that's that your, loss in Super Bowl. I mean, Mike Schmidt, Steve Carlton could have won that <laughs> award, then, right? Oh, yeah. Philly, Philly there, was title town. Boy, yeah. what a year. It was the era that I was. I still had a picture, Harry, not to interrupt you, saying, on the steps of the Art Museum. Oh, I think, yeah, we've All seen that. All four teams had representation in that. Julia Serving, yourself. Yeah. Uh, who Pete else? Peters from the Flyers. Pete oh, yeah, the, the goalie. Flyers. Yeah, the How goalie about that? And it was on the cover of uh, Life magazine. So be f yeah, that was right after Rocky ran up the steps that, and brought was, you guys popular, out there. But it 19, and no team was ever replicated. All four professional teams were in a championship game. That, that, yeah, I hope it happens again. I, I hope so, know. too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All right, so 1979, year before the Super Bowl, you're at the height of your career. You're quarterbacking for the Eagles. And you get involved in golf. Yeah. I mean, you and John Bunning, another great guy here linebacker. in the Philadelphia area, linebacker, JB, uh, you purchased what is uh, now known as the Abington Club. Yeah. It was the old York Road facility there you years go. and years nine ago. Old, nine old golf course. Sitting right off uh, uh, York Road in right? Jenkintown. 611. How did that ever come about? It, it's, it's kind of interesting because I'm a player, and you're totally focused. And you know, when Dick Vermeil your coach, you, know, you didn't like distractions. But I always, I always, in my mind, was worried that my career was going to end. And by the way, the actual NFL career is 3.3 .3 years. That probably shocks some people. The average NFL career is 3.3 .3 years. 17. 17. So by the time you're 25, you're looking for another job. In the back of my mind, I was always thinking, you know, I got to take care of my family. What I'm just, I, I got to find something like that. And I always loved the golf. I loved the game of golf. I didn't know I was going to get into the golf business, but I liked the game. Uh, Tuesday, my day off, I'd play golf, you know. So you're only like, what, 26, 27 years yeah, old or something in, at that point? born in 51, so yeah. that time, oh, 28, 28, 28 okay. 29 years old. So. That's a big step to uh, make it, an it investment was, like yeah, that. And, you know, I, I wasn't making the money the guys are making now either, so John Bunning and I were the investors in the property, and we were the managers of the property as well. So I learned the business, and Hugh Riley was our our uh, director of golf, and I learned the golf business from Hugh Riley. Okay, yeah. and and that was the first purchase. First, and then first foray into golf. What happened after that? How soon after that did you get into another course or For, uh, courses? 1984, I, I bought the uh, Tall Pines Golf Club in Winona, New Jersey. And that was kind of that was the first time I'd really bought a golf course and put my own hard-earned cash into the deal. And uh, fortunately, I have an unbelievable wife who you know supported me 100. percent Did probably did more work than I did. I was still playing ball. And that kind of catapulted me into the golf business and realized it's a it's a good business now. Nowadays, it's a great business because yeah. for whatever reason, COVID just jump started the golf industry. Sure, and a lot of people are playing more than they did when I first got into the business. But I always felt it was a I love the game, I love being around people, I like a cold beer every now and then, and golf just seemed to be a natural fit. Yeah. So you you start building and building now. Here we are, 2024, uh, Christmas. That's like. Uh, yeah. 47 years yeah. ago or something and there's eight courses now under the Ron Jaworski umbrella uh, you really have spread it out and it, it, it's, it's about people you know really is it's just like a, a winning football team you know there's a leader but then you got to have a group of people that are committed to success and the same lessons I learned on the gridiron are the same lessons I run my, my business with and treating people with dignity and respect paying them a, a good wage and demanding excellence and and it, We've had, a, as, before we did the shot, you saw one of my superintendents, Dave Santana. Sure. He started out in the grounds group 24 years ago. He's not a superintendent. Here at uh, Riverwinds? At Riverwinds. He's done a magnificent job. Here you give people a chance, you treat them the right way, you coach them up, you know, and they do the job. It just gives me great pride. So I have 962 employees in the company. You know, wow. So they, they, 962, almost 960, 1, 000 people. Almost 1,000 people that we employ. It's important to me. It's important to my wife. It's important to the company that we give these every single person an opportunity and you know that, that opportunity we give them most people take advantage of it right and they earn a better living and it, it's it's just it's good for the economy it's good for everybody so i i, I really enjoy the golf business and it, I, I just like i said the same lessons i've learned as an athlete i try to convey that to the business world and, and right. helping people grow and get better right well you have plans to expand I mean, I mean, you're Harry. You're not getting you're, younger. You're, how many years have you known? <laughs> I'm looking, man. I'm, I'm, I'm always looking. In fact, you know, we 
that culture of opportunity when we hire new people and into the company saying we're gonna we're gonna get on the golf course soon we're gonna get another golf course soon so you know take your training hard take it seriously because we're gonna need another general manager we're gonna need another green superintendent we're gonna need another food and beverage manager so those people know in our company the culture of opportunity is there if they work hard they can they can certainly get to where they want to go that's great here at uh, river winds this facility has been around for a while originally it was a municipality right yes, right. Deptford, yep. west Deptford uh, owned Deptford. this place correct you've been involved how many years here since 2009. Okay. It, it is a it, it's a fabulous golf course, link style golf course. I'm Beautiful. Gonna, I mean, you're right across from downtown Philadelphia. It's a, the vistas are tremendous. The planes are flying overhead. The tall ships come up. The other cargo ships come up. It's you can even hear the crowd at Lincoln Financial Field when they're playing right here. <laughs> when when somebody's throwing a 99 yard <laughs> touchdown, <laughs> two feet, never, two it's feet never 11 been inches. Done. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Mike Quick. Well, we may have time to talk about that. Right. But um, yeah, look at the the grounds here. I mean, it's manicured. We've had some hot stretches oh, of yeah. weather in July. Water's no problem. You it's, got the Delaware River. You got an ocean <laughs> over here. But, uh, you know, it, it's like I always say, I'm a detail guy, you know, and I look oh. around and all of this, you know, pull back the curtain a little bit. Yep. This place is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. If you ask any of my staff about details, you know they're going to mention. You notice I'm, that I'm, stuff? I'm, I'm a wonk. <laughs> If they're not rotating the tees properly, I'll let them know about it. <laughs> Are they starting from the outside in, not down the middle of the outside in? How are we cutting their collars? How are we doing the traps? How, uh, we have systems in place, but you, you don't, you're not successful in this business because there's great competition. And by the way, all the golf course owners, we get along great. Okay. You call it their competitors, but we get along great. We know if we grow the game the proper way, it'll just take care of itself. And there's a great rapport here in New Jersey where I have five, five golf courses, two in Pennsylvania and one in Delaware. We all get along and we promote the game. Golf is at a good place right now. Right, well they talk about the tri-state area, the three states you just mentioned. Ron Jaworski Golf has a footprint yeah, we do. in every one of them. All right, George, we're gonna take a break. We'll be back in a moment with our teed off panel and then more to come with Ron Jaworski from West Deptford, the home of River Winds. Stay with us here on Inside Golf. Our teed off panel is brought to you by Lulu Country Club. Welcome back, Inside Golf continues. We are at Lulu Country Club in Upper Dublin. Call it the Club of Champions. John Rusk really loves that, okay? So he's a champion, everybody's a champion here at Lulu. And joining us today on the panel, I'm gonna mention his real name once. And after that, he's Moose. It's Jeff Moore from Swing It and Ding It, we love him. All right, Joe Logan, he's been here every time, okay? <laughs> MyPhillyGolf.com. This is Ken Phillips. He's back. He's the new president of Gap. Well, not that new, right? That was yeah. January yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But good to see you Thank from you. Lancaster Country Club. Thank you. Uh, gentlemen, I want to start off with a chance for you guys to kind of spout off and maybe give an idea of some things you'd like to see changed. Uh, one thing, two things. Maybe you're satisfied with everything in the game of golf. I want to start with you, Moose. What would you like to see changed if you, if you were the king? Okay. In in just regular our golf. Yeah. One thing I, I'd love to see is is more time blocks, not so much tee times. I think people. It's almost like restaurant reservations now, right? People will make a tee time for next Thursday at 10 o'clock, then cancel it the day before because maybe they can't do it and it creates confusion. I know at Legacy Club, we, we do Saturday and Sunday morning walk-ups, and that's great. You just walk up and you go out and play. I'd, I'd almost like to see a couple times a week at clubs where you just kind of block out a couple hours where you don't have to make a tee time. If you're, if you're there, you can play. So you block yeah. out maybe 8 to 10 on a Saturday yeah. morning or something a like that? A couple times during the week, too, that's I'd like to see it. Does I anybody do that? Do you know? Is it being used? I, yeah, I think some clubs do maybe on the weekends for members. But I think it's, you know, it's the same thing with, like I said, with restaurant reservations. People just make them, and then maybe they'll use them, maybe they don't, maybe they change them. It's, it makes it a little bit hard to figure out. Yeah. yeah, and they get away with scot free a lot, right? I mean, in terms of. Yeah, you don't put the deposit down or anything, right? More, do, more and more doctors are doing that. They are charging you a, uh, if you don't cancel within 24 hours or anything, $50 minimum. Uh, anything else? Is that it for you? Wow, I thought maybe you'd take <laughs> up the whole segment. Okay. Uh, Joe Logan, I, you've been here before with this time. I, I would say now, for the professional game, it's this dichotomy of live and the PGA Tour. 
the longer it goes on, the worse it is for golf. And I think we see that when the majors roll around and we see all the best players in the world competing again in one tournament. That's what golf needs to be, not what it is right now. And, but I don't know what the incentive is for them to fix it right now. They're, they're just going along, throwing money at everything, and who knows when it will ever happen. Well, you know, more and more players now have the majority, don't they, in the guys that make that decision on terms of whether they would change it. You know, like they've allowed guys on the committee who aren't big name golfers. And they're looking out for the majority of the guys on the tour who aren't big name golfers. So don't you think there'd be quite a pushback if they tried to do something like that? <laughs> no one seems to be in a hurry to do anything to make it better. A lot of talking, a lot, not even a lot of talking. I, you just don't hear much about it right now. Right, right. Well, maybe once, and how long has this live and PJ Tour thing been going on three now? Years About now? Three years now? Three years. You think it'll ever get fixed in the next three years? That would have a lot to do with what we're talking about, right? The, uh, and the other one, you know, there's, that's the professional side of the game. And the other side of the game, which is everybody else, all the rest of us, as I look around, the cost of the game continues to go up. More and more country clubs and private clubs, initiation fees are up, dues are up, tee times are harder to get. It's just the general expense of the game has gotten higher and it will continue to go higher, which is okay if you've got a lot of money. But if you're some kid just trying to get into the game, it's not good at all. Right, right. Ken Phillips, you, these are questions I'm sure that the Golf Association of Philadelphia and mm -hmm. similar associations yeah. are constantly dealing with. Uh, changes in the game, you know, whether it's public courses, daily fee, private clubs. What would be a couple things, if you were in charge of everything, you'd like to see <laughs> changed or at least maybe going in another direction? One thing I think we're doing well at GAP is this youth on course. Youth on course is if you're 6 to 18 years old, you can go play. We have 50 courses. You can play for $5. Gap then subsidizes the club. Oh. So we went from 350 members when we started this in 17 or 18, 6,000 kids. And they're playing 12, 15,000 rounds of golf, wow. of which then we're helping. So, you know, to me, if I could be czar, okay, I'd let everyone have access to play golf. Regardless so, of their age, you mean? Uh, well, yeah, 6 to 18, you know, you get below 6, you know, you right. have an issue. Um, but in terms of changing anything, we're always big about pace on play or, you know, the pace of play. And, and for us to keep our tournaments going, we're having a Patterson Cup qualifier here today, 140 players. It's pace of the play. And we do a really good job at that. And it would be nice if, if it's when, when it's your turn to hit be nice if you could just hit the ball. And so the, every, every one of us have to do a better job of that because it just makes the round much more fun instead of waiting to... So waiting for the, whoever's yeah. farther away yeah. to if hit. Is away, you would like to see that even at just regular recreational well, golf for yeah. everybody? For ready everybody. golf. I mean, uh, ready, ready golf. golf. <laughs> ready golf. Yeah. yeah. You think uh, somebody ought to do, a, maybe Gap, uh, ought to do an experiment, uh, like a trial, to see how much actual play would be you know, reduced time-wise, mm -hmm. if that was implemented over the course of maybe a couple clubs or yeah. something like that. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Good idea. I'll take credit for that. Uh, <laughs> in our final minute, uh, I get a chance, I think, to spout off, okay? And uh, it's similar to this with Ready Play, but also this is the first year where I am now a steady forward tee guy. Uh, what are the pros? They're pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the cons? Not that much. Uh, I am a 15 index. When I move it forward, I go anywhere to a 9 or a 10. Mm -hmm. How forward okay. do you go? Which means I'm giving shots to guys I've been feeding off of for years, okay? But it makes the game so much more enjoyable. Yeah. And guys, I'm, I, I'm, I don't care how old you are. Sometimes you have to take it forward even not when you're 75, but when you're 55 or 60. Mm -hmm. The game and you change. And I think that could be the biggest impact you could have in your game if you finally, I don't want to say admit it, but try it. And once you try it, you're going to like it. Yeah. Okay? That's it. It works. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll be back more of Inside Golf in just a minute. The J. Wood Platt Caddy Scholarship Trust is the official charitable arm of GAP. 
The Trust's mission is to financially aid and empower qualified caddies and those working in golf operations in the pursuit of higher education. Over $25 million has been awarded to more than 3,700 caddies. J. Wood Platt's Empower program strengthens scholarship investment dollars by providing our scholars with exceptional benefits. Visit our website, plattscholar.org, to learn more. Welcome back to Inside Golf and welcome back to River Winds here in West Dufford with the owner, the operator, everything, Mr. Ron Jaworski. George, we've talked a lot about your career. We talked about your uh, entrepreneurship with golf course ownership. Uh, a couple things I didn't mention, though, was the fact that for almost, what, 30 years, you were a TV analyst for ESPN. 28 years. 28 years of ESPN. 28 years, including how many years as an analyst with Monday Night Football? Uh, five years with uh Start out with Mike Tirico and Tony Kornheiser. And Tony Kornheiser. Kornheiser. Tony, Kornheiser. <laughs> Tony not, t loves golf, by the way. In fact, <laughs> I play with Tony down at Rehoboth Beach whenever we get a chance. So really? He loves golf. And, of course, uh, you know, John Gruden picked up and spent three years with John Gruden. So those five years of doing Monday Night Football were incredible years, but really, really intense. Because, you, you know, that light goes on in Monday Night Football. There's 20 million people looking at you. So I know. One thing I have to mention is your charitable work. Uh, Go ahead, the youth. Jaws Youth Playbook. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I learned at a very young age to give back. And then we formed 40 years ago, my wife and I formed the Jaws Youth Playbook. We raised over $8 million for at for risk. For disadvantaged kids. Kids, eight, kids at risk. Kids at, at, at Youth at risk. And I mean, we build ball fields, playgrounds, uniforms, you name it, we've done it. And you know, there's always some whack jobs that do nasty things to steal equipment, burn down sheds. And next day we have equipment, we have balls, and we make sure those kids don't miss a beat. And I have so. a tournament right here every year to help raise every money year, for that, right? Every year, my big right? Get that $8 million to $10 million pretty <laughs> fast. Oh, we're getting there. We're, we're, we're getting there, Harry. What but, a pleasure this has been, you. folks. Sitting here, enjoying life, enjoying the sights and sounds and everything yeah. else here at River Winds with Ron Jaworski. It does not get any better than that. Joss. Thank, Thank you, Harry. buddy. Appreciate your time. All right. We'll uh, see you around the tea one of these yes, days. Yes, you will. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm Harry Donahue. Golf is a great game. Just ask this guy, huh? Ron Jaworski. We'll see you next week on Inside Golf. The 27th season of Inside Golf is presented by Destination Monco Golf, the first tee of Greater Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Association of Golf Course Superintendents, the Golf Association of Philadelphia, GAF, Jersey Man and Philly Man Magazine, and Inside Golf's partner since 1998, the Philadelphia section of the PGA.